It's time for another Dirt Daily and I am back in the shop with Noob Sock. This is my 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL. I built this in the last year, the end of last year, in about a month to go on the Ultimate Adventure trip. This is a Jeep that I rescued. It had been a theft recovery. It needed an engine. It was pretty ratty. And in about a month, I rebuilt it with a new engine, transmission, transfer case, axles, suspension, body armor. Basically, I went through almost the whole thing and got it ready to go on the Ultimate Adventure trip, which is this week-long four-wheeling trip that I go on every year. Um, and I came back from that trip and I actually still had a pile of parts that I wanted to install on it, but I ran out of time before the trip. So I kind of piled all the parts up, went on the trip, came back with the, with the plan was to bolt everything on that I hadn't finished bolting on. And I just drove the thing. I just have been driving this Jeep all the time and I really enjoy it. So I haven't gotten back to it and I realized I really need to kind of do stage two of the noob sock build because there's so many things that I still want to do to it things that I have parts that I need to install and upgrades that even though I went on ultimate venture with this thing and it worked really good I think there's some upgrades that I could still do to it that would make it a little bit better or a lot better depending on what you think um Today's project is a swing out tire carrier, which seems like a pretty basic install. Uh, the reason I didn't do that before was the uh, AEV rear bumper showed up and the tire carrier got lost in transit somehow. Um, and I went on Ultimate Venture with the spare tire just sitting in the back of the Jeep. It's kind of ratchet strapped to the roll cage right behind the passenger seat. And that was pretty good. I really like the fact that there's nothing hanging out on the back when you're on tight trails but it, having a 37 inch tire in the back of a two-door jeep eats up a lot of storage space plus uh, the tire is wedged right up against the passenger seat so you can sit in the passenger seat but it's kind of like you're in a church pew it's like sitting pretty vertical and i think the worst part about it is is that from the driver's seat you have this big tire kind of blocking any view in this direction on the passenger rear direction of the of the jeep so i decided you know what when i got home the parts were finally here for the aev tire carrier and now it's time to install that i'm going to get the the tire out of the back because i want to go on more trips with this jeep i really like how this thing drives i don't get it um, i've had a lots of jeeps for a jeep that you drive on the highway this is probably the best jeep i've ever owned which I guess makes sense. I mean, newer Jeeps, newer technology, but the suspension that I put on it with Rock Jock and Synergy coils and the SDI shocks, the thing just runs down the road great. The little Pentastar V6, some people hate that engine. I think it runs great in the two door and with the eight speed automatic, it's like, it's just a nice car. Plus this is the very first Jeep I've ever owned that has air conditioning and not that you need air conditioning in a Jeep, especially a soft top where you can open the top up, but it's kind of a fun luxury to have in a Jeep. So it's kind of something I've never had before. So my plan for this Jeep is to do some adventures, um, maybe less extreme rock crawling stuff compared to what I do with like summer camp Jeep or tube sock or my other Jeeps, but more like long distance adventures because I would have no qualms about hopping in this thing and driving it across America. Uh, but to do trips like that, you kind of need to bring stuff. And I like to bring my dogs, I like to bring a cooler, I like to bring camping gear. And I think getting the spare tire out of the back and mounting it back here where I originally planned will make it that much nicer. Plus the AV uh, Swing Out Tire Care also has a fuel canister that goes with it which I think is really cool because uh, little Jeeps have little gas tanks and having spare fuel is great for a long road trip. So let's get to it. Before you install the new tire carrier, you're gonna have to disassemble the old factory one that mounted to the tailgate because you're gonna reuse the third brake light as well as the little tiny camera, the little tiny backup camera. Um, once the new tire carrier is on, all of these things will work as factory. This will still transmit up to your dash unit if you have one. Uh, you will need a set of Torx drivers and the screws that hold the camera on are really tiny. I think it's actually a Torx number eight. 
On the back tailgate of the Jeep, there are these two little plastic panels. They have little flaps, little plastic flaps, and they're basically designed so that when you slam the door of the tailgate or any of the side doors, uh, the air can escape from inside. Not really a concern with a soft top, but probably more of a concern if you have a hard top and glass windows. <clears throat> Uh, this piece is a bracket that goes on the tailgate. The way this tire carrier will work is you will actually swing open the tire carrier with the tailgate, so it's all one piece, which is pretty nice if you use your Jeep to put, I don't know, groceries or toys or whatever in the back. But this piece has to mount on right here, and before it will mount on, you have to clearance this top piece of this bracket just a little bit. So I'm gonna come in here and mark it with some cutters and then come with the die grinder and just remove a little bit of this plastic. Once you have that clearanced, this bracket is gonna bolt back on. You're gonna reuse the hardware that you took off when you remove the factory tire carrier. This won't be supporting the weight of the tire. This will just be locating the uh, tire carrier in this little bracket, and then there will be a joint here that attaches to the tire carrier so that as you swing open this, it will all swing out together. This is the piece that will support the spindle for the tire swing out bracket. So this is actually gonna bolt on to the bumper. There's a section right here that I assembled before, which is just like a plastic cover. And this piece, will set that out of the way. The hardware for that will set out of the way. And this bracket is going to bolt on right here. Uh, but the instructions say to assemble that first, but the next step after that is to insert these bronze bushings into this bracket. So I'm gonna just do it here on the bench and then bolt everything on. It says there's a, a press fit um, and it says don't use a steel hammer. I'm just using a rubber mallet. You could also use a block of wood and those drop right in. Flip it over, put the bottom one in. So you can see there those are in there that will be full of grease when it supports that'll be full of grease when it supports the the spindle and the whole armature for the tire carrier so now we'll take these fasteners and bolt this right on you want to come up and help The spare tire carrier is going to drop down into this bracket, but in order for it to clear everything, the instructions recommend that you remove this tail light. So I opened up the back of the Jeep. You can see here how the spare tire is living in here now. And it's been working great. It's just that it's taking up a lot of cargo space. I have like a storage bag here. Baxter likes to ride right there. So in order to get a fridge in here and everything else that I want for camping, uh, having this tire out on the tire carrier is gonna be much better. So there's an access panel right. at the base of the roll cage and you're gonna pop this open and then down inside there, there's a screw and you'll loosen that up and then the tail light will be able to be removed. And just like that. So right there is where that screw threads into it. Then you'll just remove the wiring harness and set this out of the way. We're now going to install the tire carrier. This is the spindle piece that will actually go into those bronze bushings. You can see there's a threaded hole in the bottom. You're going to start by stacking a bronze washer on top of the bracket and then this will drop down through everything. You don't need to grease it all right now. Just gently work it down in there. 
There it goes. And then there's another bronze bushing that goes on the bottom. And then a big flat washer and a fine threaded bolt that'll sandwich everything up in the bottom and screw into the bottom of the carrier. The tire carrier bracket is on. Uh, now you wanna go through, back off all of these bolts one at a time and put some Loctite on. You wanna make sure that this thing is vertical or even leaned in a little bit towards the Jeep. It's really coming along pretty good. I like how it's, how clean and simple it is, how this tube matches this tube. I'm gonna back these out one at a time, put a little blue Loctite on and then tighten them up really good. You don't want these bolts to back out or fall out because that's basically what's holding the whole shoot and match on here. Once you have all those bolts uh, Loctited and torqued to 40 foot pounds, you're gonna loosen up the bolt that screws into the bottom of the spindle that's on the tire carrier and you're gonna lift the whole tire carrier back out. You have to put the piece back in that covers this whole corner. There we go. Now you have this cover back on. We're gonna put a bunch of grease down in here. We're gonna put a bunch of grease on the spindle and reassemble it one more time. There's also a Zerk fitting that is on the outside of that bracket. So we're gonna put the tire care down in here and then we'll fill up that Zerk fitting and top it off. Look at that. Don't forget the washer and the bronze washer that go on the bottom. Now we're gonna pump a bunch of grease in there. Help to keep it clear of any water and also help it to always be easy to move. What's nice about this design is that Having a bronze washer, the bronze liners, if down the road, say, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand miles, this should ever wear in or wear, get loose, all those pieces can be knocked out and rebuilt. Next is the actual tire carrier. This bracket will slide inside here. I noticed that this is five lug. I wonder if AEV offers other ones for eight lug in case you ever upgrade to let's say one ton axles. I would assume maybe they offer that. Um, this is gonna slide in and the wiring harness is gonna run in through this hole in the top so that the camera can mount in the end here. So that gets set in there. And then here's the wiring harness. This actually routes down through that hole and out to the end of the tire and then this will actually run down and go inside. So there's a two piece plastic component that the factory camera will sit in basically like that. And then there's where the camera will plug in to the back of it. And then all of this will slide inside. It's about time to get the tire out and start measuring to get this distance set up. So I'm gonna open the tailgate, swing all this out of the way, and start undoing ratchet straps. This was all just held in place with one ratchet strap that went around the roll cage tube and another strap that went from the tie down point up and over the tire. And it's been really stable. So the tire mount itself can slide in or out off of the tire carrier. You want that because you may have different backspacing wheels. If you have factory wheels, if you have AEV wheels, if you have some other aftermarket wheel, uh, the different wheels will determine what backspacing this is set at. Because what you want is a distance from this flat plate 
where the wheel will belt tight and this tube and all these other tubes because you want the tire to press up against these tubes. Um, so when you tighten down the lug nuts that hold the tire on here, there's a little bit of compression on the rubber itself against these tubes. That'll help keep it tight, it won't rattle. So in order to figure out this distance where you're gonna set this, you need to measure the tire. We're gonna measure basically from the bulge in the tire to the wheel mounting surface in the center of the wheel. I grabbed a big piece of steel that's going to sit across here right on top of the bulge and I'm going to run a tape measure in here and we're looking at six and a half inches. So that's not necessarily the backspacing of the wheel because the tire actually kicks up past the rim of the wheel. So it's a little bit more than your normal backspacing. Now we're going to run this long bolt into the back of the tire carrier and it will thread into this bracket. There's one more bolt here that'll keep the tire mount from rattling. I'm just gonna put that in for now. Both this bolt and the bolt in the back will be tightened down once you have the tire on for the first time. This turnbuckle double heim joint contraption is what is gonna go right in between the tailgate and the tire carrier. So let me grab some bolts here. Basically the idea is, is that a bolt will drop in to both of these brackets and then as you open this it will all pivot together. You do need to add some washers in here so that this stays perfectly level um, but that's basically it. I mean it's going to be but that's kind of the trick of the project is that this link which you can then adjust and tighten it up so that the tire carrier sits flush up against the tailgate is all based off of this joint with these double heim joints. So this little piece is on here. There's really a lot of washers, almost five washers above and below the joint. <clears throat> and you can still hear just a little bit of rattle, but that is where this turnbuckle comes in. This will be tightened up and it'll pull the tire carrier right into this piece of plastic that mounts on that first bracket that attached to the tailgate. We are now at what is probably the hardest part of the whole tire mount install. I have to get this 37 inch tall tire up on there. Also, this tire has a little hubcap thing in it that needs to go. We're going to try and set this tire on this stool and then roll it over and then we only have to lift it a little bit to get it up onto the bumper. All right. Here we go. Then we just come up. Boom, slide that on there and we're on. Take some factory lug nuts. If you look behind here, you can see the tire is not touching this tube. Not down here, not up there. Also not over here on this side. So now is when we go in and we get that bolt that, that runs into the back of the tire carrier and we tighten that up and have it pull all of this tight up against these tubes. Wait, don't go away. Um, I forgot something. This, <laughs> this is what's called the fuel caddy. This is a gas tank that goes on the tire carrier behind the tire and somehow I put this all together and completely forgot that I had this in a box over there. I even talked about it at the start of the video and then I just, I don't know, had a brain fart and it went completely uninstalled. So now I get to pull this off 
and which is probably good. This is a good way to test what you have to do because you have to remove the third brake light in order to get the tire off. Uh, and then we'll put this on and then we'll reassemble everything. Derp. So say you have a flat tire and you need to change the tire. You're gonna wanna slide the third brake light bracket off of the tube. And then you're gonna wanna reach inside here and unplug it. So this is the first piece you remove. Then you're gonna back off the lug nuts. The, you might wanna tuck the wires up inside there and then you can lift the whole tire right off. Now, the gas caddy or fuel caddy goes behind this piece. So we're going to have to remove this completely, which means loosening up the bolt, that the anti-rattle bolt, removing the bolt that runs inside. We're also gonna remove one of the heim joint bolts so that we can swing this out of the way. We're also gonna disconnect the camera and all of this bracketry so that all of the wiring can be backed out rather than disassembling the inside of the tailgate again, we're gonna disassemble it all at this end. Okay. Got the tire mount off of the swing out tire carrier and now the gas uh, caddy, I wanna call it the gas tank, but the name is the gas caddy, uh, will actually go right on over top of everything. There are two holes at the top where there will be a plate that attaches. And then there are three holes here that a second plate will attach. And then down here in this corner, there's a P-clamp that will go around one of the tubes. So this slides up on here. The other thing you have to remember is your wiring will go up over the top of the tire carrier right here and through this hole in the middle here. So you kind of need to route all of that safely. And then this will just slide on here like Perfect. Up on top is this plate, and then here's the back plate that holds it up against the tire carrier. The fuel tank is on. I still don't have the backup camera or the third brake light mounted, but I'm gonna put the tire up on because there's a hole right here for access to that, uh, that bolt that keeps this from rattling. And I need to put the tire on to make sure that this depth is correct and then I take the tire back off and I can put that bolt down through that hole and then I can put the tire back on and then I can finish the backup camera and the third brake light. So adding the gas tank is good because I'm gonna have an extra 10 gallons of fuel, but it is adding a little complexity to the project. Tire will squish in there. This is perfect for a 37, actually. All right, I'm gonna take this back off, put in that set screw, uh, put the tire back on, tighten the lug nuts, and finish it up. Now I think we're done. 37 inch tall spare, third brake light, backup camera, 10 extra gallons of fuel. The whole thing swings out easily with the tailgate. So much more room in the back of the Jeep to haul stuff. That's it for this Dirt Daily. We'll see you guys next time.
I did forget one more thing. This is the shaky siphon. If you don't know what a shaky siphon is, this is used to pump gas out of things. You stick this down in and shake it and there's a little marble down in this copper piece and it pumps gas. And you need this if you put gas in here because you can't take this off and dump it. So what you do is you fill this up with gas, stick this down inside the tank, shake it, and then stuff the other end in the gas filler on the side. And then you can pump gas from your extra 10 gallons into your tank. So you're gonna want this, keep the big Ziploc bag to keep it in because if you get it full of gas, it's gonna smell funny and store that somewhere good in your Jeep. All right, that's it for this Dirt Daily. We'll see you guys next time.